Hey, everyone. Welcome to Frack and Console. Um, here with CJ. CJ, how you doing, sir? What is up, sir? What is up? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I am good. We're here to talk about some games. Um, speaking of which, uh, what you been playing anything lately? Uh, yeah. Um, I uh got back into Call of Duty uh because uh in October they threw a bunch of stuff at us, so I've been playing a bunch of it and also played uh Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three campaign already and finished it. And, oh, nice, nice. How yeah. is it the campaign? Mm. Yeah, I'll say this. It has some good levels, but it really feels like they ran out of time. Like the story was going one place and then it just kind of gave up. Uh, so if you, you've played, you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, the, like we need to take the writers of this story back to, you know, writing stories 101. <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah, what what you been playing, man? Um, I well, just a little follow up comment to what you were just sure. talking about. I do wonder if this is something because, like, you've been following the you know the acquisition news, right? Microsoft yeah. and Activision and all that. I yeah. do wonder if this is something that we can maybe look forward to changing now that they've been absorbed by another company. Maybe Call of Duty. Obviously, Call of Duty is still a priority, but maybe it won't be so, like, hey, we have to keep the lights on. Yeah. So Call of Duty has to come out next year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. now Microsoft is kind of taking care of some of that. So maybe they don't feel like they got to Maddenize yeah. Call of Duty anymore. Yeah, maybe. totally. I don't know. Totally. Yeah. Call of Duty is the Madden of FPS. Like, like they, right, right. they could have totally used an extra year on development of three. So, um, yeah. And it's not even just like like you say, like it is the Madden, but it's like it's like it's almost like video games, right? Call of Duty is like kind of like the biggest franchise that I can think of, like for like that, you know, more normal people know about Call of Duty and like Grand Theft yeah. Auto and Mario. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? yeah. Um what I, I've been playing, um I've been bouncing around a bunch of different things. Um I get I um because I was heavy into Starfield for like it feels like a month. I don't know. Like I got so sucked into Starfield, but then a couple of weeks later, Mortal Kombat came out, and so it was just like, okay, I'm playing Starfield, but Mortal Kombat is kind of like pulling me away a little bit. And then it became okay. Now I'm just playing Mortal Kombat, and then like, and so, and then um, I forgot Super Mario Wonder was coming out, and so I picked that up. It was like, you know, I'll just play this later. But then now I'm playing Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. yeah. So a few few of the games you mentioned are, are games on this this ever-growing list of potential winners of game of the year 2023 um so i have my pick uh you have your pick i just want to shout out kenny he's he's going to chime in in a little bit for his pick but i'll just start with with my pick for game of the year of 2023 my my pick for game of the year of 2023 is actually going to be uh spider-man 2 um initially going into this year or this this um, gaming season, I thought it was just going to be a layup. Uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom with how many new mechanics they're opening up. Um, but uh, Spider-Man 2, man, just brings it to like a whole nother level with storytelling. And um, uh, th- there is the ever-growing debate of, you know, what makes a good game? Is it is it storytelling? Is it gameplay? Is it mechanics? Well, what is it? And I, I think it's, it's whatever is the best of all of the above. And I, uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom kind of let me down with, um, they let go of a lot of the, the immersive aspect of the game and kind of just whatever you want to do, sandbox, you know, you want to make a, a mecha zord and, you know, kill enemies with it, go ahead and do that. And, uh, when, if you go too far into that, you start to lose, you know, you know what makes a good game. And Spider Man Two, it's, it, it it's like remember, um, like when Arkham Asylum won Game of the Year, and then like people were like, I don't know how you'll ever top another single pl- player campaign ever. And then then they made Arkham City, and it was like that much more. That's how it feels from Spider Man One to Spider Man Two, nice. and. Uh, 
Yeah. I, have you played it yet? No, I haven't. I'm probably it's it'll probably be a while before I, I'm able to play uh, Spider-Man 2 because um, uh, I, I don't really exist in the PlayStation ecosystem. Um, I did. I did for a time <laughs> um, have a PlayStation, um, but I don't necessarily plan on getting a PS5, at least not for the time being. Eventually, maybe uh, Sony will be kind enough, like they have been some of their games, imported over to PC, which I am uh, kind of a part of now. So we'll, uh, we'll see. It does look pretty awesome. I've heard nothing but good things. And Insomniac, you know what I mean? Like, if they put their name on a game, like, it, they're one of the studios that I'm like, eh, I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs> like, yeah. whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be a fun, a, a good time. And Spider-Man, I did play Spider-Man, and I did play Spider-Man Miles Morales. And both of those games are banger games. Or They're awesome, really fun games. They are they're games that when I... They're the kind of game that when I'm playing them, it reminds me why I love playing video games. You know what I mean? Like... And if it's anything as good as the first one, like I, I can imagine why this would be game of the year earlier in the earlier in the year when I was even thinking about how many banger games are coming this year, um, were coming out this year, and how many good experiences that I already had um, play had played this year, and how many like games that are now in my backlog because just this year is full of incredible games that I just can't finish because a new awesome game comes out like two weeks later. You know what I mean? So like I was you know really thinking about like well what is what what is it to beat? And my early opinion was like well. Zelda or Spider-Man, like, that's it, right? Like, that, that like, <laughs> those are the two, like, I'm, there are a lot of great games coming out this year, but I doubt anything is going to be better than Zelda or Spider-Man. Um, and I was, I was hotly anticipating, um, Starfield, um, for the last, like, couple of years. And, you know, I don't, I, I see that Starfield is on the nominee list. It's a great game, and it's really deep in, well made and there's a lot that you can do um it wouldn't be my game of the year um i do love it though um so like looking across this list like spider-man 2 i don't know enough about spider-man 2 maybe if i played it like i would feel the same um as you um but i did play another game on this list um and i think my actual my choice for game of the year and uh, correct me if i'm wrong what there's like just six here like uh, here. yes <laughs> yeah, yeah okay like it's not that many it's not more than like it's not like a bunch of things but i did play another game on this list and that game is baldur's gate 3 baldur's gate 3 <laughs> baldur's gate no so i just i just bought a pc um in august or July, end of July, early August, whatever. And I just bought it like right before Baldur's Gate came out. And I was kind of like I was saying, wait, hotly anticipating Starfield. What uh, what new game is coming out? Let me test my freaking PC. Here comes Baldur's Gate. Comes out of nowhere. I'm not a D&D guy. Um, and this, I think they're, no, Lariat. Lariat is the name. Uh, Lariat, who made this game. They made uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. I bought and played that game a couple of years ago. Did not like it one bit. <laughs> it did not take at all. So I was just taking a chance here. Baldur's Gate 3 is is something different. Baldur's Gate 3 is so it's so deep and it has so many systems and it like they all it really should all just destroy itself, but it's like they all work together and incredibly so. Like I, I, I never expected to get a game like Baldur's Gate that gives me as much freedom through every level of the game, be it character creation, be it how I approach a battle, be it how I just approach world exploration, be it how I approach dialogue. Um, I never expected a game that gave me as much freedom as Baldur's Gate gives me and not break itself <laughs> you know what i mean like i've never like i've never really experienced something like that it's so it's well made and it's not free of bugs um but it's very well made it is very deep and like just the amount of stuff you can do um like i said i'm not a DD guy but it seems that like the D, &D my D, D experience comes from what i've seen of it on movies emulated you know what i mean and so it seems to emulate that process 
very well right like there's just this whole idea of like you're always kind of in a scenario right you're just kind of strolling yo what up kenny kenny uh, yo what's up kenny uh cj was just explaining why balder's gate three is his his pick uh, balder's uh, gate three yeah, I mean, yeah. hey uh, good. <laughs> that's a great pick that's a great pick yeah, yeah. So, like, just to, but j just to kind of finish up, kind of though, it, it, it really just, um, it's an incredibly well made game. It's very deep. It keeps me coming back for more. It, it hits like, um, my need for like, uh, you know, I've always been a big Bioware fan. My need for like the next Dragon Age kind of experience or whatever. It kind of hits that in a way that I didn't expect. Um, I didn't expect a, a game as free as Baldur's Gate, like, with all the mechanics, to then also have, like, be well-written, and have, like, fleshed-out characters, and, like, these characters, like, interact with you in, in different kind of ways, you know what I mean? Like, and each of the, um, each of your party members are also, like, choosable, like, at the start of the game, so you can, like, play this game from their perspective, too, you know, or create your own character, and then they're, like, your party members, you know what I mean, kind of a thing. It's, like, it's a very deep like i say that like a million times already but it's just like it's just i, I could i could either just keep saying the same thing or like spend two hours talking about every little thing right you know what i mean so <laughs> it just to, just just to like you know suffice it you know what i mean it's just a very well-made game and that would be my looking at the rest of this list um and mostly because it kind of caught me from left field i wasn't anticipating Baldur's gate and you know what I mean? I, it was I was pro probably going to miss it completely, um, but yeah, here it is. I just picked it up on a whim, and then it just kind of hit me like, oh gosh, this game is incredible, <laughs> actually. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that would be my pick. Awesome. The way I I kind of pitch Baldur Gate to some people is, um, it lets you play Dungeons and Dragons without needing to figure out a schedule for four to five other people. Like you get to play sort of a Dungeons and Dragons like experience, but almost like solo by yourself. Um, my other thing is how many people are you married to in the game? <laughs> oh, I'm just, um, just me and the, my, my Gith Yankee, like dominatrix, uh, girlfriend at the moment. You know what I mean? just, <laughs> <laughs> we don't really, she doesn't like labels, you know what I mean? And I'm okay to yeah. let her have, you know what I mean? I'm like, Hey, it's cool. We, we're just saving the world together. We don't need, you know what I mean? We don't there need you labels. Go. Yeah. Um. One one last thing I was gonna say. Uh, when you popped in and you just kind of reminded me of it was I've never really played a game where exploration to me actually felt like um what it sounds like D and D is. You know what I mean? Like whereas like D and D exploration isn't really a thing, not per se. It's just like kind of like you're kind of guided through a thing, and like I've never played a video game where like i'm just kind of walking in an open world and it literally feels like you know what i mean oh here's this thing and then it pops and then it, it might put you into a complete scenario it might like enter a cutscene. it might just be like you know what i mean like it's, it feels like everything everywhere i'm going is like curated i guess yeah and i never really yeah. felt that in uh just like an open world kind of rpg before and i really commend the game for that cool yeah, thanks for CJ. Awesome choice, uh, uh, Kenny. Uh, what what is your pick, sir, for game of the year? Hey, uh, I'm popping in here just to throw my uh, my change at Spider Man Two. Um, that is the the kind of Spider Man game that I've wanted since I was a kid. Um, the closest we got was funny enough Spider Man Two, which was when the Tobey Maguire movie came out. Um, and I think it was THQ at the time. They did a, a great job of kind of giving us sort of a sandbox Spider-Man game. But, um, now with like what we're getting in the miles Morales and like all of that, this is the game that I was focused most on wanted and excited for, um, the, uh, the ability to play the, the campaign, change your suit, um, play to your style the open world like this is kind of a game that i've always wanted as far as superhero games go and i think this sort of sets the bar the standard um for super game or superhero type games moving forward um hopefully uh 
there's been some duds in the last several years, um, but this is such a high standard and, and such a, an acclaimed game so far. Um, I want to see more like this. Um, Story-wise, uh, very well written. Gameplay-wise, very flushed out. Um, and it lends a lot of itself to the Spider-Man universe. So um, it just creators that are passionate about their project, you can see it when in the story and then developers who are good at their job, you can see it in the gameplay. So um, this to me, hands down is game of the year. A question to something that you just said there, um, because you were like, we haven't you haven't really felt like you got this since Spider-Man 2 the game like not even in their first game no so Spider-Man 1 definitely like that was uh, a game that i picked up sort of on a whim like uh, i know every all of my friends were playing it um but i wasn't as uh excited for it i was kind of like we'll see if it goes on sale i'll pick it up and then I ended. I didn't end up getting the first Spider-Man game until maybe it was out for like six or so months. Um, picked it up and then fell in love with it. Platinum the game. Thought it was great. Miles Morales was fantastic, but I my criticism of that is it was DLC that I had to pay full price for. Um, then you get to Spider-Man Two, which is you take the best parts of that first game the best parts of Miles Morales, you combine them, and that's what we're getting here. Um, I mean, I have some critiques with like what they want to do with this, some of the story stuff, um, but like uh, as far as a game that sucked me in and like captivated me uh, uh, or demanded my attention, it's been Spider-Man 2. Uh, if I don't know what to play, um, that's what I've been going to. On the back end, it's... Uh, or I guess a, a notable mention would be um, Teenage, Mutant Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. Um, but that's just like a pick up and go Switch game. This is like, a, I'm going to sit down for the next two hours, three hours, and devote everything to playing Spider Man. So nice. Yeah. I do think it's an interesting conversation. Like, kind of before you hopped on, like Tyler was, was mentioning, like, what makes a. What, what what makes a good game and like i would even take that phrase further like because we're talking about game of the year what makes a game of the year right like because like there yeah. is like like there are different th things that make a good game right you know what i mean like yeah. be it story be it gameplay be it like other things right you know what i mean how it looks the style um and all that and you know i think i think tyler was kind of alluding to that yeah he thinks like the best are like kind of ones that shine in, in all of those categories or maybe multiple of those categories, you know what I mean? But I do think it's an yeah. interesting discussion. Like what, what does make a game of the year? Because every game on the list is a really good game and beyond yeah. the list, there are other really good games that I've played this year. You know what I mean? And and when I was looking at the list, one thing I noticed is how different all of the picks were. Um, yeah. And they all kind of like shine in different things. There's indies, there's, big budget there's you know the rpgs there's just action games there's you know what i mean like in in early i think we were even talking offline when we were recording a different episode and like you know kenny had mentioned like alan wake which is which isn't on the list but like alan wake too which everybody is like loving right now you know what i mean yeah. like, and like you got super mario wonder just came out like there's a, you know and there's other games yeah. that i played earlier this year that i wouldn't even i wouldn't have been surprised to see like hogwarts legacy on this list um i did horizon next, forbidden west like right that's the diablo yeah. 4 um, yeah freaking i didn't think it was going to make the list but um there's this game final fantasy 16 yeah. a game i sunk 200 hours into like <laughs> yeah yeah, but like, what what makes a what makes a good game, right? Like, like a game should be fun, kind of a thing, right? It is, does it suck yeah. you in, right? That makes a good game. But then, what, what take turn that up and I? What makes that? What do you? How do you turn that into like? No, this is like so thing. <laughs> this is I have thing. a, I have an answer to your question because to me personally, uh, what takes a game from being like a game that I enjoy to a game that I love or a game that I consider that like tier is because I'm mostly a PlayStation gamer. 
um, the platinum trophy. If I'm willing to sit down and earn that platinum trophy, to me, that means that game has uh, succeeded in every level. And I want to achieve all of the like uh, hardest requirements to get that platinum trophy. So a game, like I mentioned, Final Fantasy 16, fell in love with it. Um, I played it. Uh, I, I did two campaigns, uh, ended up sinking 200 hours, broke a controller because I played it so much. <laughs> um, and if you can do that in a video game, you can get my attention all of my free time. You've succeeded. It's a game of the year. Um, to me right now, the only two games that have done it uh, this year, and th this is a great year for games. Uh, so I'm not trying to diminish any of the other games. Um, but the, the big two, in my opinion, are Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man 2. Yeah, that was your previous pick for Game of the Year <laughs> before Spider-Man 2 came out. Yeah. And, yeah, and I and I, uh, I, I personally, uh, I don't normally pick <laughs> RPGs. Um, so I actually didn't play Final Fantasy uh, 16. Um, but I, I agree with Kenny. Uh, a lot of it is is uh, the general audience just picking up and playing. Caveat to that, though, you know, we're, we're talking a little bit uh, before you hopped on to, you know, you're always going to have your Call of Duty players who play the same game every year and uh, unlock every achievement because that's just what they do and they don't play any other games. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, the the true gamer, the a gamer who's going to you know play more than two or three games a year. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, one other thing we are talking about earlier is uh, uh, what my prediction for game of the year before playing any of them was uh, going to be Tears of the Kingdom. And then uh, because they're introducing all these new mechanics and these new uh, abilities, and but they just took it so far that people aren't even, like, playing the story like it's just yeah like, what thing can you build I, and destroy with and uh, i think they gave too much too fast yeah, yeah. um i <laughs> like i like some of it i like seeing some of it but i yeah it's it's a lot it's almost overwhelming i feel yeah yeah and i would argue the same thing for S starfield because i played that too and like starfield you know um it's you have to have like the combination of all these things available, all these new mechanics. But I think the the glue that that really hooks an audience and the glue that really decides whether or not it's game of the year is doesn't have a, like a good story. Is is it one that's gonna you know captivate an audience beyond just you know uh, poking around, looking at different galaxies and stuff for. <laughs> and not yeah. not a true because because like people are like people in droves are still playing Grand Theft Auto like insane amount Grand Theft Auto Five it's games and that's out. a ten year old game yeah, yeah. Old game part of how they do it is they keep adding to the story these like DLC packs every year or whatever that adds to the story and um, it's you know that's what's connecting them not the do whatever you want whenever you want sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, well, I, I do have, I have a like I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Not wholeheartedly, but I don't, I, I don't think you're wrong, um, in saying that. But like, there is an element. Like, people are still playing Grand Theft Auto. There is an element of like social hangoutness to Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, for sure. That's you part of it. I mean? like, yeah. So it's like it's Definitely. not like just like it became it transcended. Like it maybe like they were coming back from the story, but it transcended that at, at some point, and it became bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like so, and th and that's why like I think this discussion is so interesting because I think about like in something like a game of the year, right? Like if it goes to to a Nintendo game, yeah, it's probably not mostly the story that you're like there for because nintendo like yeah they have stories they have great stories but their focus is typically like gameplay like and so you're in you 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 follow a story in nintendo game but you're into it because of how it, you're well how fun it like to play. nintendo too is like innovative gameplay right like they're the ones changing the controllers every five six years they're the ones who went from the wiimotes to the joy cons and like, so they're trying to immerse you into a level of gameplay that you wouldn't get on your Xbox or your PlayStation. 
Like that's how Nintendo sort of innovates and gets you like sort of a little more captivated or sucked into it. Um, we would like to play. <laughs> it's yes. Oh, um, I did want to. I did want. Sorry, to, I know you got. No, you're good. But, um, I I did want to like it, just to iterate on what um, Tyler was just saying about Starfield. The reason why Starfield, because I I played a hell of a lot of Starfield, <laughs> and I'm not done playing it. Um, just ha- not really playing it right now, but um, not done playing it. It's it, but what I think the reason that it wasn't like my pick of the year is because it, it it's a game. Uh, someone said it. I, I watched the podcast, and they said Starfield is a game. It's a type of game that you kind of get in what you put in. You get out mm-hmm. what you put in to it. Like so, and I very much kind of agree with that. Like it's like no, like I can find if I if I'm like leaning heavy into this, and I want to like role play this, and I want to do this. That all the all of the material is there in Starfield for me to have the kind of playthrough that I want to, but. I have to make that decision, though. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. like, it, and then it's make player that. driven, right? Like, you know what I mean, which is awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? Don't get me wrong, that is awesome, but it's not like game of the year because yeah. it's like it's a thing. It's not curated. It's just like kind of this big sandbox that has like a lot of cool stuff in it. I think Starfield, if it gets the support that it needs in a year, is going to be better than it is right now. It's going to pull a cyberpunk. Um, yeah, I think so. Or like a uh, um, no man's or no, yeah, no man's no sky. Man's sky. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Like give it the support it needs, develop, um, give it more. Um, something I wanted to touch back on is you had mentioned T- um, CJ. You had mentioned uh, social gaming. So there's like like Destiny, right? Destiny is one of the ultimate sort of social games. Um, you need a group that's consistent when you play it but that's why i think those games can't be at least in my opinion can't be a game of the year candidate like without having a social group to play those games um they're almost kind of unplayable at times um you can't do like the raids or like the new dlc or campaign missions and stuff like that um so i always kind of set out on those which is why i like to focus on like solo campaign individual experience story base games um the big thing is uh everybody's game of the year is going to be kind of different there was a lot this year i feel um and um it was all over the place uh from your alan wakes to your spider-mans to your starfield so and you know, I don't think you're alone. I do. Th- I think Jeff Keighley uh, would agree with you, to be honest. Um, and but I, I honestly feel like that probably comes from trying to find something quantifiable about a game of the year choice, too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like something like, okay, here's a game that ha- it has a great story and gameplay is fun, and like everybody are kind of buying it. So they, you do kind of get the game of the years, like you said, like they do kind of have a feel after a while. You know what I mean? We kind of mm. can kind of guess towards what they're going to choose because it's like, okay, well, if it's a game that's kind of like last of us, um, <laughs> like it's probably yeah, gonna yeah. win. You know what I mean? Like um, yeah. I was a little surprised to see resident evil remake on here. I mean, yeah, it's a great uh, resident evil for resident evil Four remake on there, but um, yeah, it remake, seems a little cheap, right? Like yeah, you remake yeah. one of the best games ever made. Like, yeah, it seems <laughs> yeah. unfair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I, I definitely uh, I'm well fed from this conversation. Uh, is is there anything uh, else you guys want to add to to this amazing recipe we've put together of a <laughs> of a meal of a conversation? <laughs> um, uh, I was trying to think if I were replacing it because the only thing that I was like that I wouldn't have on the list after seeing it would be the resident re4 remake okay. like if something okay. about that it's like that shouldn't be eligible yeah. <laughs> like that shouldn't be eligible yeah i agree I it here. it feels a little cheap yeah it, well is there any games that you would want to add to that's something else <laughs> the one that i would add and i and it either i wouldn't choose this as a winner but um and it was it just kind of got shadow dropped earlier this year high fi rush mm-hmm. um high fi rush is one I was talking about like a type of game earlier. 
Hi-Fi Rush is the type of game that when I played it, it reminded me why I love video games. Mm. And like, it was like, it was such a great ex gaming experience for me. Um, and I would put it, I would have put it on, if I were making the nominees, I would have put it on the nominees. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't expect it to win though. And I wouldn't put it above like Spider-Man 2 or Baldur's Gate 3 or anything like that. But I would put it on the nominee list though. Cool. Um, I'm going to throw in uh, this goes along kind of the lines of uh, the uh, Resident Evil 4 remake is the uh, Crisis Core remake um, that's a game I never thought I would get it's a game that I bought a working PSP for um, and sat down and played it during the pandemic because I never thought I would get a remake of it um, and then to get a remake with uh, quality of life like um, improvements and all that um, it's a game that I sat again, sat down and sunk a lot of time into, um, and a game that I appreciate that, that Square Enix listened to the fans said, we need to release this game in a playable format in the modern era. Um, and so I hope that we get to see more games like that because, uh, digital catalog and, um, the digital preservation of games is something that we as a gamer culture need to have a more broader discussion about. Um, and so it's nice to see some of the companies identifying this like issue that's happening. So. Very cool. Thank you for sharing CJ last words. Not really. <laughs> Game <laughs> words have been <laughs> yeah. Well, Kenny, in case, uh, in case you have anything else, last words, sir. No, that's it for me. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making it this far with us. Thanks for watching Fracked Console. We'll be seeing you guys later. Bye.